guys, what's up? It's Olivia. So I have been in a really big Disney mood lately. I really want to make some Disney content for you guys. So today I have three stories about the worst days at work I ever had while being a cast member at Walt Disney World. Two of them were with Donald. One of them, I think I was hanging out with Mickey that day. The Mickey part of it wasn't the bad part. The fact that I was so sick was the bad part. And then my last story, I was hanging out with Donald and I had a partner who was a piece of work. So make sure you stick to the end to watch that story. Before we start, I wanna say a couple of things. One, this video is not sponsored by Disney. Two, I do not currently work for the Walt Disney Company. Three, I did work for the Walt Disney Company in fall 2016 where I was a character performer on my Disney college program. I worked in all different parks and resorts and things like that. And number four, there is this thing called character integrity. If you've watched my other videos, then you'll have heard the spiel before. But basically, in order to preserve the Disney magic, I will not be using sentences such as, when I was Cinderella, because there's only one Cinderella, so like I could never have been Cinderella. Instead, I will be using Disney code and saying things like, when I hung out with Cinderella, when I was friends with Cinderella, when I had a shift with, when I performed with Cinderella. Hopefully you can figure out that code, but basically it's just out of respect for the company, keeping that integrity and keeping that Disney magic. So all three of these stories actually happen in Hollywood Studios. <laughs> um, that was not my favorite park to work in at all, but towards the end of my program, I would say about half my shifts were in that park for dining. And so this was my very first time doing a dining shift there. I had just finished my Core Plus training, which is character dining training, and I had a shift at Minnie's Hollywood Dine, which I was assured was such a great location, the um, rotation was not difficult to learn, the guests were nice, the costumes and characters were fun. So I was really looking forward to the shift. Actually, if you go back and look at um, my Disney College program videos, the day that I film the video called character training in my 51 hour week, I'm like, yeah, I have the shift coming up that's in Hollywood Studios, I'm really excited. Yeah, right after I filmed that, I went to the shift and like cried all night and it was horrible. Part of being a performer means you have to be very comfortable with not working at the same location like ever. <laughs> when you count up between the different locations, the costumes and the characters that I performed as, um, I worked 23 different types of shifts. Most people only work one type of shift, like the place that they work. Maybe they work on Main Street and they're zone one one day, then zone two and zone three. Okay, so, so three different types, 23 different types of shifts. So it was like maybe my second or third week working at the company. I was still learning how to get to the different parks where character base was or entertainment base at the different parks. Um, I was still learning everything. So I go to Hollywood Studios, find entertainment. I'm like, hey, I'm new. I've never worked this location before. And they're like, okay, great. You know, we'll make sure to show you the rotation and stuff. Um, get my costume and everything. Go to the location and I keep telling the captain, hey, I don't know this rotation. It's getting close to when we have to start like getting dressed and going out to meet guests. And I'm like, hey, I do not know this rotation. I've never seen the inside of this restaurant before. I need to go see it. And at that location, it was always weird because the morning captain worked until like four, but our first set was like at like 3.45 or four. And then the evening captain, who was like technically our captain, started at like four or 4.30. So the person who was gonna be my captain for the night wasn't there yet to like show me and like that morning captain was busy with like the morning shift of people. So it was just kind of crazy. But then a manager walks in and I kept telling the captain like, I have not seen this restaurant. I need to go see this restaurant. And the manager is like, oh, like I'll go show you the rotation. Like, you know, I'd be happy to do that. And I was like, awesome, thank you. So typically when you're new to a location, um, a manager, a captain, um, someone will take you out and they will literally take you through the rotation. So you'll go into the restaurant. Okay, this is the part you're gonna start out with in this little box. You're gonna just bounce back and forth between the tables and you're gonna go here, bounce back and forth, go the wall, go all the way up the wall till you get to this partition, come back, you know, go around the tables, just follow it around the wall, come back and then go on the other side and do the exact opposite. But they'll literally take you to and like, if there's guests already there, um, then they'll just kind of do it slyly, maybe just kind of like point at them. But if not, then they'll literally like touch the tables so you know what direction is. And a lot of times, um, performers and everyone was really understanding if you were new to a location. They understood that it might take you a little longer than normal because, um, 
you're figuring out the rotation as you're going and you're not as like efficient and fast you normally are. So I've had people before who the other person was new to the location. So even if they only covered 30% of the restaurant, I would make sure to kick it into high gear and during my set, see the other 70%. So typically entertainment is super, super accommodating to when you're new to a location. However, at this time, I did not know any of this because this was the first dining location that I had learned outside of my initial dining training. So the manager takes me out to the restaurant and goes, here's the right side of the restaurant, here's the left side of the restaurant. Now you've seen the restaurant. And I honestly thought he was kidding, so I was like, ha <laughs> And then he's like, okay, you good? And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, okay, you've seen the restaurant, are you good now? And I was like, well, I don't know the rotation. And he's like, oh, well, here's the right side of the restaurant, here's the rest side of the, of the restaurant, and you just, you just go. And I was like, um, okay, because again, I did not know that they usually like literally take you through, tap the tables, and then ask you have any questions, all of that stuff. So I was like, okay, yeah, we're good. So I go back, get dressed, it's cutting it kind of close because remember I had been find, trying to find someone to take me to see the restaurant. So I get back, throw my clothes really, really quickly, go and start meeting guests. And I don't know where the heck I'm going. In the break rooms, always there is a map of the restaurant and it has number tables and all that stuff. And they're like, okay, so you're gonna start here. But the thing is, I was never taken into the restaurant and told like, this section on the map, that's this section here, or anything like that. So I was very lost and so the attendant that day, oh my God, I, again, one of those situations where I'd never seen her before and never saw her again. She was so mean to me. She literally throughout the night was grabbing my wrist and yanking me across the restaurant. And I know not all dining attendants are like this because I've had an attendant before at a new restaurant I was at literally like walk me, like hand in hand walk me very gently to the different tables and kind of just like stand at each next table like prepping the family before I got there but so I could like see them and like know where I was going. But this lady was like evil to me. She was literally dragging me across saying like, why don't you know where you're going, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm just, I'm just trying to do my job. I, I've never been here before. So after two sets of that, you can imagine I was just in tears. Here I was just trying to do something nice, hug families, do things like that. I was never told the rotation. Um, this evil lady was dragging me across the restaurant and like, not just like leading me, like literally I'm like tripping over myself, getting dragged around. It looks very unprofessional, not very nice. So I start bawling and the new captain that came in, the evening captain, was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I was like, I'm brand new, I don't know this location, I don't know what I'm doing. And then like all the other people were like, it's okay, like you'll get it, you'll get it, you'll get it. And I was like, I don't even understand this map, I was never shown the rotation. And he goes, wait, you were never shown the rotation? And I go, no, I was taken out, literally told, this is the right side of the restaurant, this is the left side of the restaurant, you good? And he was like, who took you out? And I was like, such and such manager. And then there were collective groans from the other performers. And they were like, yeah, not surprised, he's been fired from like all these different locations and now he's stuck here and he's even screwed this up. Let me also say, there were several wonderful managers at Hollywood Studios, like ones that I love and adore and I think are amazing, but this one, not so much. So the captain took me out, showed me the rotation. Um, I didn't quite mention like, hey, this attendant is doing this to me, but I was, I kind of did say like, they're dragging me and I'm not comfortable and like all this stuff. Um, and so she was dragging me less cause now at least I'd seen the restaurant and known what the rotation was. But yeah, and I'm pretty sure it was like raining that night because um, Florida hurricane season, tropical storms. So it's like pouring down rain. And in this location, the break room, like you had to cross like a little street to get to the restaurant. So you had to walk like under umbrellas so you didn't get wet, like to the restaurant. So just all these compounding factors. It was a very horrible night. I was so afraid to work that location again. However, once I did learn that rotation, it was completely fine. And like I said, I worked there three to four shifts a week in November and December. The story is very short. It was at this location again, Hollywood Studios or Hollywood and Vine, Minnie's Hollywood Dine, whatever that stinking restaurant is called. And it has nothing to do, honestly, with the guest or the night or anything like that. But it was at the very end of my program. I think it was like my second to last shift. So like December 28th or so. 
and um, I was incredibly sick. When I flew home on December 30th, I went straight to urgent care. I had two mental ear infections, literally could not hear. My vocal cords were so swollen, I could not speak, I could not swallow, and they think I had strep, but they didn't test for it because they said, the antibiotics we're giving you for your ears are so strong that it's gonna kill strep or anything else that you have. Imagine flying across the country with two mental ear infections, not being able to hear, not being able to speak, not being able to swallow, it's not fun. So this was like two days before that, so I was still like in really rough shape, hurt to talk, my throat hurt. So I feel like a lot of my stories have to do with attendants who are like the breaker attendant, meaning my attendant that you have like for the entire day, they're usually fantastic, but there's always this person who goes around to the different stations and just works for like 20 minutes at that location while the attendant gets their break. Um, so they're called breaker attendant. And so, Something happened where my regular attendant was like on lunch or on break or something like that. I was meeting guests and we had, I think, 30 minute sets that night. So 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off, 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off. And it was like approaching time and I was never told, hey, you have five minutes, hey, see one more table, hey, time's up, anything like that. Nothing to let me know that my set was over. So I'm thinking to myself, well, it's kind of been a while. Like, I feel like I should be done soon. So I'm like, okay, let me just like finish these couple tables then go ask my attendant, all this stuff. So I go over, like finish some tables, go ask the attendant, like, what? And she's like, no, you still have, like you still have time, like whatever. And I was like, okay, that's weird because I feel like I've been out here forever and I'm like getting really, really hot. And so I keep going and then like, I don't see any attendants. So they must all be on the other side of the restaurant. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I keep going out and I'm like doing my thing, meeting guests, and then I finally see my attendant come back from lunch. So I go over and I go, and she goes, Mickey, you, you still have like 15 minutes. And I go, and she goes, are you one or two? And I go, one, and she goes, oh my God, you're supposed to be offset 15 minutes ago. And so at that point, guests at tablers are like, oh, Mickey, Mickey, like, come say hi to us, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, nope, sorry, Mickey has to go for a second, he'll be right back. So then I see another performer backstage and she was like, oh my gosh, like, I was looking for you, like, what happened? And I was like, I never got taken off. Um, and I was like, okay, see you in 15 minutes, like, have a nice set. So I finally make it back to the break room and they're all like, oh, like, where were you at, blah, blah, blah. And I go, I was never taken off. And they're like, what? And I was like, yep, I'm really, really hot right now. So um, honestly, at that shift, once you got to like 30 minute sets, you didn't really like take off your costume. You took off parts of it, um, but you didn't completely like change out and get to completely cool off just because like 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off isn't really enough time to completely like get dressed and undress and all of that stuff. And so I just sat for like 15 minutes trying to drink water and they're like, you should stay for like 10 more minutes out here, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't wanna, you know, ruin the schedule. So anyway, did that. So I am also remember feeling incredibly sick. Two days later, I had that horrible ear infection, all of that stuff. And so I come out, I'm stressed, um, I'm tired, I'm hot. And I just start crying because I can't swallow, I can't talk, all of this stuff. I also start shaking because I'm so sick. And so my captain comes over and he's like, are you okay? Like, do you need anything? Like, do I want to make you some hot tea? And I was like, yes, please. Like, show me where it is and I'll make it. And he's like, okay, great. So he takes me over to this area. And he's like, okay, yep, just do the, um, you know, water fountains. They have like the blue side and the red side. He's like, do this, here's the bag of tea. So like I do it, I put the bag of tea in and then I'm shaking so bad I drop the cup. So that was great. Now our entire little kitchen area is covered in black tea and I'm sick and already crying. So I start crying more and I'm just in pain and tired and ticked off that I was left out on set for much longer than I should have been. And my captain was so sweet. He goes, it's okay, go sit down. I'll take care of this and like, as a captain, so it's like performers and attendants and you have a captain over you and then managers above them. So as a captain, you don't like have to do like the grunt work. Like it is your job to like take care of your performers, but not in like a, not servant way, but you're not like, not like an assistant, you're under them way. So the fact that he was like, go sit down, I'll clean up this mess, I'll make you a cup of tea. That was so nice and so heartwarming and so appreciated. Anyway, he cleans up the mess. He brings me tea, he brings me lemons, he gives me sugar, um, brings me like a cold towel to put on my head. And he's like, just rest, like you still got time. I'll let you know when it's five minutes till, 
all of that stuff. So even though a lot of the shift was horrible because of getting left out and then I was just in so much pain, my captain was so amazing. I don't remember his name, but he was fantastic and he definitely took care of me. So like it ended kind of happy, like I felt good, but it was still a really rough day at work. And this is where the video is going to end. As I was editing just now, I realized that probably no one wants to watch 30 minutes worth of stories, so I'm gonna just do the first two stories in this video, and then for next week, I'll do that last story. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it across other social media platforms. Comment below your favorite place to meet characters. Hope you have an awesome day. Remember to keep dreaming out loud, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.